my most recent piece of work, and it was public art. And I want to walk you through, again, the process of exactly how this was created. So the Brooklyn Museum got in touch with me, and they were working with the World Health Organization, and they wanted to create a piece of public art around COVID. And they got in touch uh, exactly a year ago now. I don't know how everyone else's levels of depression were doing. I was feeling like uh, pretty low and pretty like I didn't really want. I wanted to communicate how severe it was, but I also couldn't handle any more negative imagery in front of me. And so what I started to look into, well, what are some of the factors that can reduce the spread of COVID? And I found this incredible body of research, multiple studies that found that the existence of trees reduces the spread of COVID, right? And this is even when you control for other factors like rural versus urban, population density, all of these things. And so I kind of wanted to create an ode to like New York's trees. So this was the space that I knew that I was gonna to have to work with. It was the steps of the museum itself, which is really exciting. Um, and I started off by actually finding the data, which again is often like, I haven't talked that much about that today because it can be quite mind numbing, but it's also vastly, vastly important to make sure that I'm finding the right data. So this comes from New York City Parks Department. It's incredible. Every 10 years, they send volunteers out with clipboards who count every single tree in the city. And they log what the health, the condition of that tree, the name of that tree. So we have this incredible data set of every tree in New York. And then I looked up what were the, based on this data, I analyzed just the top 100, the top 100 most common trees. And I found visual photos online of each of those 100 trees as well as the leaves that come from those trees so that people would be able to like, identify a tree from a leaf. And then I spent a really long time drawing them all. I created the ink separate from the color because I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do both or just one part of it. Scanned them all, stitched them all together. These are the scans on a pink background. I wanted to like, again, because I'm so fascinated by process, I wanted people to be able to see my workings. I wanted them to be able to see every single line of the color. This is it all stitched together. I also wanted to talk about inequality because that's what I'm always, always talking about, right? So this is the average number of trees in the poorest New York zip codes versus the richest zip codes. So I still wanted to make this point, right, that even though the color green can minimize COVID rates, not everyone gets equal access to the color green and to trees. And this was the final result. This is them we, uh, pasting up on the wall. It's still up, in, um, up outside the museum until um, the end of November, which is really exciting. Um, and this was the full process that took a very, very, very long time. So it's finding data, finding those visual references, scanning everything, stitching it together. And the thing that's really, really exciting about this piece of work is that people have told me that based on the work, they were able to pick up the phone and call their representative and say, we want more trees where we live and campaign for more trees in their area, which is ultimately the goal of my work is not just to represent the world, but hopefully to change it. Thank you so much for your attention today. Thank you, everyone.